in the lives of human beings there is both pleasure and pain. No one can escape the duality of human experience. At some point or other, there will be difficulty in, the, in your life, both personally and in the collective. Because the movement forward of evolutionary flow of life requires struggle. It is a part and parcel of life. There cannot be joy without sadness. There cannot be love without the sense of longing and loss. The duality of human existence is the nature of this external experience. And sometimes you may find that life seems to go your way and everything is good, and other times it goes against you and you feel, why is this happening to me? Sometimes people have a belief in God and then terrible things happen in their lives and they think there is no God or God would not do this to me. But God is not doing it to you. It is the natural balance of the duality of manifest existence. Each emotion, each experience has an opposite. And those opposites play out. One is known by the other. If you don't have love, you will never experience loss. And you will never experience life. Each is a balance with the other. But when you go beneath the surface of the rising and falling waves of manifestation, you come to a deeper stratum of existence. In that deeper stratum, the dualities do not exist. The dualities are of the physical and psychic planes. When mind grows in magnitude and quiets and thoughts of these dualities begin to subside in the mind. Then arises awareness of the non-dual nature of existence. Awareness, attention falls to the natural state of being that exists without the dualities of manifestation. That natural state of being is a state in which consciousness, aware intelligence, is in a state of unitary wholeness. There is no difference between the conscious, aware intelligence 
and that which is perceived and the process of perceiving, they become one. Slowly as the mind subsides and the images of this duality of existence begin to fade, this deeper stratum that abides through all creation comes into view, comes into your aware consciousness. As awareness sinks deeper and deeper into this experience of its own existence, the words love, truth, bliss, Sat, Chit, Ananda. Those experiences arise. The form of Guru arises. But as the heart of Guru is known, those forms fade away. And there is the divine form. Of pure being. Of love. Unconditional. Of reality, truth. But beyond all of those terms, There is the experience, something that has no words, no constructs, because every construct is a limitation, a box, if you will. And the consciousness, the beingness, the love, the truth, that is at the core of your existence, your natural state of being, is beyond all boxes, beyond all words, cannot be named. Only when the mind is activated and the reflection of that is in the mind, the mind gives it words. that depth of love, that intimate association. is a unitary experience. And in that unitary experience, there is no opposite. There is no duality. For that love, there is no loss. There is no hate. There is no opposite experience. The direct experience of it does not require an opposite. It is. The 
the substratum of all that exists, the unitary whole, where lover, beloved, and the experience of love become one. Seeker, the experience of seeking and that which is sought become one. There is then no seeker and no seeking. There is no sought. There is no beloved of your heart. There is no reaching to the beloved. There is no aching. There is no seeking. For the one seeking, the process of seeking, the process of yearning, and the beloved become one. Then the beloved is There is no duality between you and that deepest love which your heart has sought, that beloved of your heart. This is the state of freedom because you are not bound by the confines and definitions of the mind. You are not bound in the duality of opposites. You are free. Sometimes it is difficult for people to understand because they think, I go into this high samadhi and I experience the bliss and the unity, the light. But then my mind comes back to duality so, and, and the pain of separation. So there is a duality between these two. But no, this is not correct. Because when mind grows in magnitude and the ego dissolves into this unitary experience, really dissolves, then when conscious awareness returns to the physical form and the dualities of physical life. Awareness, consciousness of this unitary experience permeates being permeates awareness, permeates your mind, a light that is bright, permeates everything. And the true nature of what is, even in this manifest world, becomes your perceptual field. Though you see the separations of form, though you experience the opposites of joy and sorrow, of love and fear, of being held and of losing love, 
you perceive all of that through eyes filled with the consciousness of that infinite beingness of the Sadguru, the true self of yourself. And for that one, there is no duality, even in the physical world. For all experiences of opposites are held within the experience of wholeness. Parama Purusha, that divine, that non dual, that unitary. source of all being is the very substance of everything, every experience, be it painful or be it joyous, be it your heart's desire or the disaster of your life, be it life and birth or death. of the body. Both are permeated. Both occur within the non-dual being, within the unitary whole, within the love that is the substance of all that is. For those who have eyes to see and hear, ears to hear, the bird singing in the tree is the song of Parama Purusha. The babbling brook teaches the truth of reality. They are all the forms of the Sadguru. And even the most dire pain is that form, teaching you also, teaching you not to look to duality for your substance, teaching you that there is a wholeness to everything. That is why for one merged in that infinite being, in that substantive whole that is the true nature of all that is, they see on the outer the forms, the pleasure and the pain the acquisition, and the loss. But they see stronger in their view the beloved, the nature of self in all that is, the sameness, the unchanging nature, the timeless nature of being. So then those who complain, God has forsaken me, God has forsaken us, that we have lost the war and tragedy has occurred. God has forsaken me, that my loved ones have died. God has not forsaken you. 
you fail to perceive the nature of your loved ones. You fail to perceive the nature of creation, of duality, and of the creative unitary whole that is substantive in the dualities and never changes, is timeless, immortal, infinite being. Never has that one forsaken you. Never will that one forsake you. It is you who loses awareness your, as your attention becomes drawn into the experience of the duality and you feel God has forsaken me when it goes badly. But God has not forsaken you. You have turned your awareness to the maya, to the illusion rather than the substance and you believe the dream, you believe the illusion, rather than knowing the substance. Because the beloved of your heart, who you experienced in form, will always be with you, will never leave you. Your loved one is always with you, your joy, your that which you have loved is always with you. Because what you have loved truly is the beloved. And you cannot lose that one. You only lose sight of that one. Because your awareness is caught in the dream, not in the reality. There is not a duality between these experiences. Reality is your attention, your awareness can shift, change, move into duality, move into unitary being, move into the heart of love, move into the beloved. And when you move into the beloved and melt your being into that, there is only the beloved in all experiences in this world. The great teacher is with you constantly. In the air you breathe into your body, into the body itself, into all the experiences in creation. They're all the experiences of the Beloved. Even if you remember this with your mind, even when you do not feel it, that remembrance makes a difference. Slowly, slowly, you bring your remembrance back. Feelings go up and down like the rest of the dual experience. Today you are happy, tomorrow you are sad, the next day you are worried or fearful. That is the nature of feelings. They move up and down. But the experience of the beloved, the experience of the Sadguru, the experience of the Infinite One. That can be known even in the mood swings governed by the brain and the body and the biochemistry of the glands and the external experiences. That can be known. The cause of suffering lies in perceiving the unreal, the illusion to be real, in perceiving that which is ultimately pain to be pleasure, rather than perceiving the unitary whole 
of being manifest in all the dualities of this world. So when you lose focus and you experience pain, it is not Parama Purusha. It is not God forsaking you. It is you getting lost in the experience, the emotions. And when that happens, take the part of your mind which is the knower. Take it back. Let it rest in knowledge that there is one. You can know that with your intelligence, awareness. Even when the feelings roust about. For feelings like thoughts are not above duality. But substantive awareness can impact both your thinking and your feelings. Sometimes the mind can know even when the feelings roust about from high to low, from joy to fear. And the deeper you establish the more steady the feelings become, the more able to perceive the unity, even in the duality of experience. You talk earlier of politics and the struggles of the nation, the struggles with the pain and fear engendered by plague, with the ill management of a confused soul. And the difficulty to rust that one from power. These are things of the world of duality. They have opposites. They wrap your mind. But if you become aware in it all that there is a deeper stratum, that the divine exists in all of these experiences, then you can stand for dharma. You can fight for truth, but not be polarized. For your truth lies in a love, in a knowing, in a knowledge that there is one essence, one substantive whole in which the maya of reality plays out like the dreams in the mind of the dreamer. What is real, the dreams or the dreamer? The dreamer is the one, the mind of the dreamer is the reality. And in it, the dream plays. If you know the dreamer and you remember, even when your emotions are going in different directions, even when outer circumstances become difficult. Remember, it is all the dream. It is all the beloved taking the forms of the dual existence. And let yourself sink into the dreamer, into the beingness, while you walk through the world of the dream.
It does not mean you do not stand for Dharma. It does not mean you do not hold the flag high of Dharma. But that in it all, you maintain the knowledge that all is the beloved and the evolution of consciousness. That way, you are in the world, but not of it. And you can walk through the darkest of circumstances, and there is a joy in your heart, for there is always the light of being. the infinite love. It never changes. Do you understand? Remember this, all right? Namaskar.